So I got a, vid, uh, a request to talk more about Mona Baker's book and actually I wanted to make this video that talks about books for a, a translator and I'm going to kind of tie the answers together. So to me a good translator will have a few books that will be the kind of core of their knowledge and over time you read more and more and you add to it and you kind of internalize it. But so for me, for Chinese, first thing you need is a book like this. This is a oh, synonyms and basically you can get these for any language. If you, if you were to look at it, it kind of gives you a um, two terms that are very similar and explains how they're different and why they're different. And this goes into more depth than a dictionary. So this is the kind of thing you need to know. Before you even start translating, you should know most of this type of book. Um, but you can still use it for reference. Um, another type of book you're going to need is like a really advanced, again this is for Chinese, uh, zoom right in on that, a really advanced book on um, s the structure of the language on a deeper level than you would get in a dictionary. Again, for translators we have to understand it more than just your average member of the public would. So, Assuming you've got all that, you've got things like grammar, references, possibly for both languages. Uh, the next thing you're going to need is your subject expertise. You need to know your subject very, very well. Um, so let's say, hypothetically, you're doing medical translations. You'll need to know a lot of stuff in a book like this. And you will even... This is so heavy. Guys, this is so heavy. <laughs> you will even need to know a lot of the stuff in here. And I always make this joke, a good medical translator is just a doctor who translates. Um, the problem is a lot of doctors think they can translate when they can't, and a lot of translators think they can do medicine when they can't. Um, but you need to try and find that common ground between being a doctor and being a translator. You don't need quite as much depth of knowledge, but you'd be surprised how much knowledge you need. Um, uh, I do. Well, I originally started out doing civil engineering documents um, and I've got a, a, a postgraduate certificate in civil engineering and still I find, you know, I get sent PhD papers on concrete engineering and stuff that I can't understand, couldn't translate them in a million years. So it's worth um, really getting that really good knowledge of your subject area and then over time you can kind of broaden it out and I've I have in over the years translated so many contracts and now I reckon I could do a degree in law and pass it pretty much just because I've read probably I don't know 2,000 contracts in the past 20 years okay uh, the next thing is the two different types of textbooks and here's the one Mona Baker okay let me give you a clue about the value of this type of book this is the the classic one but why is this relevant well Let's look at the chapter names, guys. The chapters. Number one, equivalence at the word level. Chapter three, equivalence above the word level. Four, grammatical equivalence. Five, textual equivalence, uh, theme and information structures. And then six, textual equivalence, cohesion. And then seven, pragmatic equivalence. The entire book talks about equivalence. When um, the great... Chinese scholar of translation, Yan Fu, he came up with this theory which uh, uh, in Chinese is called Xin Ya Da. Xin means to be faithful or we could say equivalent, right? And he sort of said every translation should be equivalent, elegant and it should convey whatever, right? But what does equivalent mean? Do you mean the words should be equivalent? The sentences should be equivalent? The grammar should be equivalent? The order of the sentences should be equivalent, the use of diagrams should be equivalent, the use of colour, the document itself, the whole notion of whether you need this document, should that be equivalent? So really just saying equivalence doesn't answer the question because we don't really know what equivalence means. And a good translator is balancing different types of equivalence depending on what the client needs. So this type of book helps you really understand all the different considerations when you ask yourself, is this sentence or is this word the same as that word? It's not as simple as just looking them up and seeing if they're the same. There's a lot of different considerations and this type of book is good for that. But then the other one you would need, uh, this is the Chinese translation, but this is Peter Newmark's book, Textbook of Translation. And if I just give you a couple of 
uh, chapters from this book, you'll see what I mean. So it's got chapter 2, the analysis of a text, chapter 3, the process of translation, chapter 5, translation methods, Tran chapter 6, unit of translation and discourse analysis. All of those things are so useful to understand and they're kind of telling you that the act of translating, not just saying are these two things equivalent, a big part of the act of translating is asking are these two things equivalent, but it's not the only thing we do. So. I, I feel like you need both of these textbooks or books that cover both of these types of subjects uh, plus the reference books that I mentioned that is a, a really good kind of fundamental sort of system a fundamental set of knowledge that you can then use to go ahead and hopefully become a great translator